Hello, audience, and thank you for returning to Adventures in Commercialization. This week, I have the pleasure to be with these lovely ladies. I have introduced them as members of my company, onboarded them to just like meet and greet. But when I really dive down deep into what they're doing, it has inspired me to want to bring them on this show because they've done an amazing job to promote their business. They've pivoted like to the maximum and we're gonna learn all about it today. So welcome Mickey and welcome Sarah to our show. Thank you. Hi. So ladies, tell me a little bit about yourselves. Tell me like how we got here, how we met. Let's, let's dive deep. All right, so we'll start at the beginning. Um, Sarah and I were trying to decide if we were going to disclose how long ago this was, but almost 20 years ago, um, we met at our very first day of college, freshman year, um, and we've been friends really ever since, um, and we became business partners about a year, officially about a year ago. A year ago, and you guys <laughs> have done so much in such a year, wow. <laughs> Been a roller coaster, yes. So I know we're on Think Tech Hawaii, and I learned a little bit about what Sarah has been up to. And Sarah is really excited to be here today because she actually began as a cheese connoisseur in Hawaii, which is crazy <laughs> because I grew up in the Netherlands where cheese is like a thing, like the Gouda. <laughs> so, um, yeah, tell us. I'll say we call we called ourselves cheese mongers. The official title. <laughs> okay. Um, but yeah, yeah, that has a nice ring to it too. <laughs> but you know, um, early early twenties, um, living in Maui and working at a wine and cheese shop. It's interesting to think about what I didn't realize skills I would learn there um, in the business and from the my um, our female owner that now. I use in everyday fifty post life, um, much much later. <laughs> so tell us a little bit about so cheese connoisseur or what was the word you used? Sorry, oh, cheese monger. <laughs> cheese monger. All right, I love that. So what were you doing in Hawaii? So you said Maui. In Maui, yeah, in Kihei. So um, it's a retail shop, um, woman owned, small business. So a lot of self promotion. It was early days Facebook, so trying to use that as a marketing tool, um, and we had newsletters, and so I did a lot of, of dealing with vendors, with purchasing of the product. We had shipments going to different islands, people shipping product back um, to the mainland, and just kind of learning business. I had never worked um, in a small business, um, and so it was just a, a whole different you know, field than working for a corporation. I'm a lot more hustle. <laughs> Hawaii is a perfect environment to understand that procurement uh, understanding, because like you said, you're on an island, you have to understand the locality of where you're at, what the local resources are, but also procure things, get them there, shipping, facilitation of that like liaison type style of management. But that can just uh, go into so many different sectors. And that's what I would really like to tell people today is that all of the things that you've done in the past, they can definitely push you towards your future. It, working at McDonald's or service industry can help you become your own business owner. And you little did you know, or, you know, cheese shops in Hawaii. And now we're doing a sh uh, talk show for Hawaii, you know, <laughs> like success. Uh, but you ladies are the art of pivoting. I mean, I heard you're a maximum gifter and uh, meeting people in your past. I have girlfriends that I met 15 years ago at Girl Scout camp that we are still friends to today. And we do art projects together over Zoom, you know? So it's really great to understand that, uh, pick up the pieces of your past a little bit, like take those uh, breadcrumbs that you've you know, laid down and keep them for your future. Keep them in your back pocket because they could totally create a successful business. So tell me a little bit, uh, Mickey, about what you're doing now. 
Yeah, so um, I'll give you the short version of how we went from Cheesemonger. Um, and I, I spent about 12 years working in London and um, moved back here and produced a storybook. And as I produced this book, started to sell it, um, starting my first uh, solo business um, there, Sarah got involved and helped me with packaging. And then we started to add some spices to the books and people liked those. And then we found ourselves with a gift box around the book. Um, and in the meantime, because of COVID, um, Sarah ended up losing her job at Vulcan where she was doing procurement. So again, to your point, Zoe, about going from a cheese shop, like how do you go from procuring cheese to procuring airplane parts um, for a billionaire? Um, Sarah transferred those skills and then was helping me with storybooks. And then suddenly she realized, you know, this is a chance to kind of do what I, I love and do something more artistic and with food. Um, and so then we ended up doing gift boxes. And then Sarah just was making all these gift boxes and realized, actually, this is a business. Um, and then what was Pixie Spice became Pixie Post. We launched a new website, um, as we said, about a year ago, and we took all of that early customer success and then built it into um, what has now become a repeat, repeatable business based on just what people are going to buy. Um, so it's been a really interesting experience. So you're both in Washington now? Right? Yes. Okay. So how do you market yourself? Like we talked about Facebook before a little bit. Um, the biggest thing about this show and the reoccurring instance is like people who lost their jobs to COVID. I'm yeah. one of them. Sarah, you're one of them. We are people who had to pivot hard and pivot fast, but it's a blessing in disguise a little bit here. So take your passion project and turn it into your livelihood. So how do you guys decide that it is going to be from, you know, just a passion project to your daily daily product. Yeah. And that's like one of the decisions that COVID kind of took away for a lot of people. It's like, here we are, I've got a new thing. Do I go and try to find a new career or do I use this little bit of time in this new environment to see, you know, where my passion and, and dreams could take me? Um, and so for marketing, really, Zoe, We've tried um, different paid marketing tests, and we found that the most successful marketing for us has been word of mouth referrals. So we're really lucky to have a strong network um, here in Seattle, which has then brought us business all across the country because people will send gifts. They will mention like, oh, I bought this wonderful um, specialty gift box for my grandma for Mother's Day, but also I manage a team of 15 and I want to tell them that they did a great job this quarter. Um, and so I want to do a specialty gift for them. And that's just kind of how it's grown and grown. And, um, you know, we, we met a few months ago and I learned about Johanna, the, where um, assistants help busy parents deal with all the things. Um, and that was another example of where we got to pivot is that we had a conversation and you said, you know, actually, we might not be interested in buying all the products, but we might be interested in the wrapping and the packaging and bows and wax seals and things that make this, the recipients feel like this is a really special thing that's coming in the mail to them. So now we have a wrapping service. Um, on the totally other side, we've started to do... Um, housewarming presents for Airbnb hosts. So instead of doing all the packaging, we do the sourcing and then we can help them buy in bulk um, and have that all set up for all their guests for the summer. So we're going from gift box to only gifts or only box. Oh dang girls, you guys were just doing it all. I love it. I love this art of pivot. It's so important. Uh, something that you could take from a passion project to a career, but also understand that it's not just a linear view. It's a, it does, of a lot of avenues that are willing to make money here in the future. So pivoting is so important and being open to the ideas of something new is very important. You wanna, we talked in a past episode about a little bit of, should you just go with the flow of these past like milestones that you hit and you know what's gonna happen? Do you wanna be too innovative? And they're like, no, well, you, you have to hit the milestones but you also wanna be something new 
and like uh, exciting for everybody. But you ladies have just been the art of pivot, literally like, oh, this girl's talking to me about wrapping presents. Well, we do that. So why wouldn't we get paid for that? Let's try it. And it's yeah. great. So I absolutely love it. So what kind of milestones are you looking at in the future? Where are you at now? And what, what things are you trying to hit this year? Oh, that's a good question. Um, Sarah, jump in here too. I, I'd love to be able to hire a person to help us with all of the process stuff. It's like Sarah and I will spend hours coming up with ideas, thinking about great packaging, doing staging, um, coming up with ideas for our social posts. But man, the hard thing about a small business is the taxes, the accounting, like making sure that we are doing the right level of analysis about the profitability of our different product lines. That kind of stuff is hard. Nobody wants to be an accountant. Okay. Just like uh, leave that to another job. Yeah. Also that one. <laughs> but so you ladies are working together, but out of your homes, correct? Yes. Yeah. So you uh have like an attic full of wrapping paper right now. Okay. So yeah, my whole second floor has been converted to Pixie Post. <laughs> <laughs> So if we can look at the Pixie Post website a little bit in the background here, uh, we will see what you guys have done, which is absolutely phenomenal. Uh, you got you two are just a success story here. Oh, that wax seal, Zoe. If you scroll back up. I know. So a little bit of background story is uh, Johanna. We have not yet had Johanna on the show, which I'm looking forward to in the future. However, uh, Mickey was one of the first uh, members that we had at Johanna, which is a uh, startup app to create more wellness and opportunity into the modern family home and to give them more time to focus on their passion project, you know, and to give them a little bit more time back in their day. So Mickey was doing this, you know, Pixie Post. We asked, we have one member on the show or on our membership that does gifting. He literally sends 60 gifts a year. I'm pretty sure that's probably the only business you've gotten from us, but he literally sends like 60 gifts a year. And he's like, I order them from uh, Macy's, Nordstrom, but I don't want them to look like they came from Macy's or Nordstrom. I want them to look like they came from me. And there's not really a concierge service that does that. There's not really somebody who takes it from A to B and makes it look like it came from me. So we switched that up and Mickey and Sarah have pivoted their company to create a customized seal, a handwritten letter. Absolutely, like there's no touch points that you need to participate to make sure that everybody in your anniversaries, birthday gifts, all of these distant relatives that you wished you paid more attention to, these ladies are doing it. These ladies are making sure that your family feels like you've actually remembered all those things. I just literally had to write down my grandpa's birthday because I didn't even know when that thing was going. <laughs> now, if you give it to your assistant, Pixie Post will take care of you. Okay. They will give it and you guys are also sourcing very locally that's your main idea i mean of course if you have a coworker that's moving to florida you ladies will locally source in florida to make sure it feels good it feels right yeah. it feels comfortable it feels to the theme so tell me a little bit more about your sourcing of your uh product yes there do you want to sure you know this it's one of the fun parts of i think of of this job is just vendor relations it's something I did a lot um, in aviation and it's something I still really enjoy and especially working with the small businesses we try to source a lot of Pacific Northwest products as we're in Washington and Seattle so in Washington Oregon Idaho but as you said Zoe we we do um, source out throughout the nation if the recipient is out of state um, we love doing customization for our clients. And so for sourcing, you know, our values are small business, women owned, minority owned, um, handmade products, um, which there's a lot of, especially in the last couple of years because of COVID, a lot of businesses have popped up. And a lot of people are now making products and um, it's been really fun to try and make those connections so anyway time i'm out somewhere i'm always keeping an eye out for for new products snapping photos and sending emails seeing if people are 
willing to do, you know, fulfill orders for us. Sometimes the business is way too small and they say they just can't make that much product. Um, and um, then a lot of times they can't make enough for the orders we have. And so that's been a limitation to our value system, but it's still something that we want to stick with because we believe in it so strongly. Right, yeah. so all those Washingtonians with those blackberries in the backyard, start <laughs> prepping your businesses, or I don't know, Hawaii, you got blueberries out there, raspberries, we'll take them, okay? <laughs> Absolutely, I would love to do a Hawaii box, Sarah. I know, I've been plotting one in my I mind, know. I just haven't executed it yet. All right, well, we're in the right place for the right yeah. time. Yeah. Watching. Call and me. anybody out there, email me, <laughs> Sarah at pixiepost.com. Pixie Post, you've got a couple products. hundred uh, little jars of something, we'll take it. We'll put it in our <laughs> life. Absolutely. Um, and Zoe, I think one of the things um, that's really important about what Sarah said is that as a small business, we understand what these small businesses are struggling with in terms of distribution and reach. So we'd love to be able to help a great product get more users and buyers from across the country. Um, and so that's one of the things that really motivates us and makes it worse sometimes the extra hassle. Um, or, you know, we have to sometimes ask our customers for some patience because the really great product that we want is literally being hand poured in someone's kitchen. And, you know, they're hand pouring 300 candles for us, but they might not be able to do that in two days, you know. Um, and overall, our customers have really responded to that well. And the gamble that Sarah and I are taking is that that extra work of sticking to the small business um, support theme is also allowing our customers to stick with us too, um, because they know that we're consistent and we stand for something and we help them shop their values too. That's great. We all have to start somewhere and we all have to promote each other. So if you guys had a couple of, let's say, uh, hurdles that you faced or let's say advice for other entrepreneurs, let's say women in specific, because you ladies are doing it like and doing it well. So if you had some little advice for women entrepreneurs specifically, what would you say? Sarah, do you want to start? Um, sure. Um, yes, for for me, um, just starting this business, um, it has been like really, really important and really impactful for us to rely and for me to rely on connections that I already have, rely on my network, on my community. Um, you know, as a woman, I was in the sorority, that's how Mickey and I met. And so relying on, on those female connections, um, that sisterhood and then using skills that I've learned in the past that I didn't know could translate to the future. So um, don't underestimate your abilities and, um, you know, don't be afraid to just push yourself forward. Correct. I totally feel that. I literally just went to lunch in Seattle with my coworkers for the first time. We went IRL in real life. <laughs> oh, wow. How nice is that? And I, this is the first time I've worked with all women. It's crazy. Like I used to work in the, you know, startup seasoning feeling, and that's all like middle-aged white men, you know, right. Let's just say it. But, uh, I actually was working with all women and I got to meet all women in less shy with a little bit of sunshine wild astronomical <laughs> equation to think about but when we met each other some of the people have come from corporate uh taco bell mm -hmm. and know about uh nutrition some people came from the medical field some people came from i am a corporate event management but anywhere uh you came from aviation procurement which is really crazy because my parents are aviation mechanics <laughs> oh, wow. first maintenance uh southwest and american wow uh, people who came like from that. So if you think about the skills that you have, like take it and use it. Don't just think it was a job that you could use, but just like think about how those skills are utilized in the future. Use them because they are real. They're hard skills. They are hard skills and you could create an entire business from it. So you ladies are doing great work. Your pivoting skills are phenomenal, like <laughs> phenomenal. And you're doing great things. And they met each other in the sisterhood. So <laughs> keep your network around. That was another episode that we had was talking about network, networking. 
It's so important. Take those people who have hard skills from your past, from your future, and just utilize them and just think about how they can uh, pivot. Just pivot them. Just take them and move on. Absolutely. And it can sometimes feel um, like you don't want to sell your friends, right? You don't want to just feel like the only thing you're doing is be like, hey, I've noticed you haven't ordered anything. (laughs) So Sarah and I have been really careful about, you know, that balance and, um, you know, trying not to oversell. But when we've talked to our friends about it, they've been like, no, you need to remind us because I forgot. I literally forgot. (laughs) So I think that's as as women, um, particularly, it's easy to just be a little bit less. I mean, you could use the word assertive or aggressive. Um, because we think it's going to be perceived in a certain way, but you can you check in and get feedback and find out if you've gone too far one way or the other. And what we more consistently hear is we want to hear more from you. Tell us more instead of leave us alone, which I think is a good sign. <laughs> well, you guys are doing so well. And honestly, actually, one of the criteria I have for dating a man is he has to be a good gift giver. So <laughs> that's, a that's a good one. You have yeah. to. If you have a friend that's a good gift giver, just make a business about it, you know? <laughs> <laughs> you ladies have done so well. And I'm so excited to see where you go in your future. You're doing things, you're promoting local businesses, which is something that just needs to happen. There's but where was the place where you said this is gonna be my full-time jam? Like where where did you just say like drop the day to day and become my full-time gym. When did that happen? I think for me, I don't know that I can fully pinpoint a time frame, but um, I guess maybe if I put it last, um, the holiday season, because yeah. our, our business is very seasonal and the holiday season rush is so exhilarating. Um, and I was just having so much fun and it's just really great to be giving gifts for a living, you know? Um, if somebody else is paying for them, I get to put them together and design them <laughs> and then mail them out. And it's, I'm bringing joy to, to all these people across the, you know, the United States. And it, it was just so much fun. I had just a great time and I thought this has to continue. Oh, so your passion project, your fun of spending other people's money just turned into your real life business. And then Nikki oh, hopped onto it. She's like, she's such a great gift giver. Let's like <laughs> make this money. Yeah. And my role is more, well, we have to charge people for it. So, I mean, that's, that's another piece of advice is that it's easy to get swept up in a good product, but you've got to keep an eye on margin because if you don't, you don't have a business. So your financial advisor is Mickey and you're just, yeah. part of her. okay, we get it. <laughs> yeah, because I, I would want to try and give everything away for free just because <laughs> I think it's so fun to put smiles on people's faces, but yeah, yeah. Mickey's there to say we're a business. <laughs> so I love it because you have to have a practical person and an emotional person, yeah. like emotion giving and the person who's like, okay, there's money behind this. Let's go. <laughs> so she's the one who's like, okay, we're going to like, add this to Facebook and it's going to be worth this amount of money and you're going to just love it. Okay. So I, I love that. You two are a success story and you have many more milestones to hit, but do you have something that you're reaching for this year? Um, we've built up a pretty good, uh, repeat client base, um, from a few, sort of agencies and businesses that want to um, celebrate customer success or that um, want to do onboarding. And that for us is a really good balance to the seasonality of holidays on our consumer gifting side. So like Sarah said, the holidays are great because we sell a lot and it's very busy, but then January comes and it's like, where did everybody go? So for us this year, getting more, um, even revenue across the year and trying to add in these other bumps. For example, creating our own seasonality a little bit and promoting Airbnb host boxes or host kits at the beginning of the summer season, you know, and like just trying to get some more of that to to level out, I think is a big goal for us. And it's important as we move to the next stage. And the Airbnb thing, we didn't even discuss that in our little pre-talk here, but phenomenal, phenomenal pivot for you too. 
Oh yeah. And it's been a really cool one actually, because it came from an idea that one of our clients had for an employee gift box um, that was all about movies. Um, and then we were talking to some other of our friends and family who have Airbnbs and we realized that this movie box, which we started to sell and has sold really well on our website, we could turn it into a popcorn corner um, for Airbnbs. So Sarah got like set up this beautiful little popcorn corner. Yeah, that's it. Um, and so there's like a little popper, like this really awesome um, salt from San Juan Salt and like a little sign in a tray. And then um, for the Airbnb host, the cleaners just have to replenish the popcorn. We've got that there for them. Um, and then we also have some like customized toffee that has a picture of the house that they're staying on it. Um, so it's really fun. And I think there's a lot of mileage in that too. Yeah, I totally think, think you're like wine vineyards and you guys with your face on the like wine bottles now <laughs> and like yeah. all of a sudden I'm thinking of my parents actually they're the biggest home bodies you could find they are literally have like they work for the airline so when they're at home they just want to watch movies so they have a home theater like they could just uh -huh. have more just you two are the art of pivot like literally you'll send it in whatever direction that wants to be specialized you're the the ultimate gifters but the ultimate pivoters so really fantastic. I think you ladies are doing a phenomenal job. And I'd love to bring you back on in the near future so we can just see where you're at then. But if you had one last piece of advice for entrepreneurs in general, what would you have? Um, I would say don't be so hard on yourself. It's always going to be slower and more expensive and you're never going to be able to do it all as fast as you want. Um, but you can make progress. So just believe in yourself and give yourself a bit of a break. And I think mine would be um, kind of in the regards of pivoting is don't limit yourself. Don't have boundaries. You know, be be open to new directions and and, and just see where that goes. And you just never never know where it might take you. Well, I'll take Sarah's and put it back on Mickey's because here we have a beautiful mother both these two are beautiful mothers young ladies in success that are here pivoting their life met each other as friends turned into their reality passion to project okay and then at the same time mickey was one of my members coming in and it's okay to ask for a little bit of help sometimes but came in saying that she needed a little bit of help uh, with a home front of i'm working on my business i'm a working mom pivoting to just try to make my sisterhood project work. And I'm here to help her in the background. And at that same time, I was like, hey, can we make you more money by just taking like your big idea into like a little bit of sector, sectionalized idea and turn it into just wrapping? And again, it's very, uh, let's say seasonal because I know you guys aren't making that much money on the day to day, but there is that one guy who just wants to buy Macy's products for his members with a personalized little stamp on it. And that's probably where you're getting all your money from. But there is just a pivot that just says, we do this, but we will do this. Yeah. And take this to another level. Well, if one person's gonna buy it, there's a market there. So let's um, promote it and hope we get a thousand people to buy it. Well, today I just opened LA chapters and you guys are on our member list. So we're, we're going, we're going to the distance. We're going to be the new Ubers of assistance over here. You two are the gift wrapping gurus. So I absolutely love the fact that we got to connect more. I hope to watch your progress going here in the future. These two are the art of pivot and the art of exploration and just find somebody who's in your past and take your past to your passion and take your passion to your passion project and make it a career. Love it, Zoe. Thank you so much. You make us feel good about ourselves. Uh, we really appreciate your support. Always from cheese to aviation, from Hawaii to Seattle, let's do it. So thank you so much for coming on the show. We look forward to the, seeing what you ladies are going to do in the future. Thank you, Zoe. And I, can I just say www.pixie-post.com. Yes, go uh, send them your birthdays, anniversaries, any seasonal without even seasons. If you send them the dates, they're going to send them a gift. So we're going to make this happen. If you want to learn more about how to make money, join us every other week for 
the uh, adventures in commercialization. And we're going to learn more about uh, entrepreneurship. So thank you so much for your advice. Thank you so much for watching Think Tech Hawaii. If you like what we do, please like us and click the subscribe button on YouTube and the follow button on Vimeo. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and LinkedIn, and donate to us at thinktechhawaii.com. Mahalo.